she never had any pain, um, never, never had any issue, never complained about her back. I couldn't see it, um, you know, in, in sports, it never slowed her down. She had half a physical and the doctor, you know, had said that, you know, oh, when she might have scoliosis. And, you know, like our first thought was like, how did we miss that? You know, I, you know we're, we're, did we do something wrong or whatever else? I think you kind of go through that at first. Well, most parents will say, we didn't see anything and three months later, whoa, there's this huge curve. And that's the scary part about scoliosis is that how fast it can progress during um, these growth spurts. And it's all related to how fast the growth happens and what happens during that stage, how big the curve becomes and nobody can predict it. So what you should be looking for is any sign of asymmetrical posture, any kind of asymmetrical shoulders, any kind of asymmetrical waist, any kind of asymmetrical rib cage, anything that's asymmetrical in the outline or the silhouette of the posture is abnormal. Don't think they're just gonna grow out of it. I would definitely get their spine evaluated to see if there's some scoliosis there because with Liliana, she definitely had a curve before she was diagnosed. It just was so small they didn't see it and she probably progressed between two pediatric evaluations or visits and that's when they saw it. We wanted to go someplace that we felt was going to be the best results. We didn't want somebody who was going to recommend a surgery right away. I mean, listen, if you have to have a surgery, you have to have a surgery. But that should not be plan A or B or probably even C. And if you can avoid having surgery and get really good results, I mean, you know, I think that's what you should do. And that, that is definitely the mindset here. It's a warm environment. They're very friendly. Now uh, you go up there, you know, when you when you first see it, it, it's a little intimidating. There's all these different strange machines and contraptions, but you know, you see other people doing it and they're just very kind. Uh, they make you feel at home. Walking into the intensive center or the therapy center upstairs in my clinic can sometimes be a little intimidating because you're seeing some equipment and machines that you're not familiar with. But it's kind of like when you first walk into a gym, you're just seeing some benches and some cable machines. You probably don't know what to do with them. But once you're instructed and once you see, hey, these things are very simple to operate and the benefits are amazing. They can provide this very rapid, quick reduction in the scoliosis, which sets up every other phase of care in terms of stabilizing and reducing scoliosis long term. So the therapy that we do in the office, I think is unreplaceable in any other type of thing that we can do, even though it does have its other some limitations associated with it. But that's where the other phases of care can come in and play a big role in supporting the care we do in the clinic and the care in the clinic supports what we do at home with bracing and exercises and home rehabilitation. We just really felt comfortable with the approach here. And I think it's, it's not, inv not invasive. And I mean, the results you saw just after a few days really exceeded our expectations. When we initially spoke with, you know, Dr. Tony and he, at the consultation, he kind of said, you know, uh, baseline, you know, average results across all ages, you know, at the end of treatments is about a 30% reduction. And her worst curve was a 43. Well, she got down to 31 in less than two weeks. I mean, that's just, that was like 28.5% in just two weeks, not the end of, you know, however long this journey is of treatment. And then when she's wearing her brace, it's down to an 18. And that's a 60% a reduction. Our braces are designed to actually help reduce a scoliosis because they provide corrective forces, more than just a three-dimensional push, but actually biomechanical changes to the spine. And these changes can be very noticeable when you take an x-ray. And what we find is one of the best predictors for a good long-term outcome is how good their initial in-brace x-ray is. The care that we do in the clinic sets up to provide the best reduction in brace. And then we're, we're very often modifying these braces to, as they're getting more comfortable, as they're getting more used to these braces and as the curves are reducing to make, it, to make the curves reduction even more powerful. So the bottom line is that these braces are tailored to work with the therapy and the rehab to provide the best possible reduction. They're not limited to just trying to slow progression uh, during growth. You know, there really is a, a lot of light at the end of the tunnel and it's non-invasive and you're doing it in a much more natural way.